Well, good morning. You're watching Morning at NTV. Uh, you know, a few years ago, someone approached me and said that they had, uh, through an unfortunate accident, had to be amputated. And he said at the time, when the doctor mentioned amputation, he didn't know what exactly that was. He didn't know how his life was going to be after that. And he said it was actually quite a struggle even after amputation because he said, unfortunately for him, nobody was able to really go into what it meant to be an amputee because the doctors two feet and said how was the doctor going to say apart from the medical terms the doctor wasn't able to explain psychologically what it would do for him and he decided after that that you know every time he meets somebody in the same situation he would try and better their mindset and i think that's what my guest today is really trying to do kangume charlotte is a co-founder of amputee support network uganda good morning good morning Flavia. nice to meet you charlotte nice meeting you're you. nervous yes. shake it off yeah. shake it off <laughs> Shake it off. <laughs> we'll chat like friends. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Um, so just for my viewer who is not able to see, you are yes. an amputee. Yes, I'm an above knee amputee. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's, there's also differences. Ab above knee. Yes, there's above knee and below knee. And below knee. So help me here because I've not bothered to go online to check the definition because I wanted to hear it from you. Amputee is missing a limb? No. Mm -hmm. uh, amputee, uh, amputation is when they cut off one of your limbs, it can be a finger mm -hmm. through surgical. So people shouldn't just Press. think of the, the leg. No. Amputation is any... Any part of your body. Okay. Mm. Because I have um, an uncle who's an amputee uh, from diabetes. Mm. And I have a brother-in-law who's an amputee from the arm. And this is, you know, from his work, line of work, which is yeah. the army. And I've seen the two men adjust to life mm. because they had their limbs fully before that and then the life after that. Mm. Being men, they have families. I've seen the struggles. I've seen what it means and I think I want you to chat about that, about yes. the support system you get around your family, your friends, the people you work with. I, I think I want to go in your mind and understand that as well. But just for people to understand your story, yes. how did you get here? Uh, um, January 26th. I got an accident. Uh, our car this got year? Yes, this year. Mm. I, our car got stuck in a trench, so as we were pulling it out, the person that had to accelerate over accelerated the mm. car and I was crashed on the wall of the fence. So you were helping to yes, push the car? Yes, I was wow. helping. And when they crashed me on the fence, I blacked out <laughs> because of the pain, I guess, and I found myself in hospital. So through that whole process, I got compact syndrome. I didn't get a wound on my leg. Okay. I just got internal bleeding, but apparently the main nerve that transfers blood and all that got cut inside. Mm -hmm. And later I developed gangrenes, dry gangrenes, and the only solution was amputation. Mm -hmm. yes. So that would be that if you don't get amputated either you, can't, you lose feeling of that particular point? You, you already have lost feeling, the leg is dying or any part of your body is mm -hmm. dying, and this, this has Toxins, the gangrene that toxins, could go then up to the rest, go up to the heart, mm. and you die. Okay. So the only solution to that is amputation. How this do th how do they even say this to you? Well, it was a, a very big tug of war, but mm. the doctors had no choice. They had to tell me. Mm. My family wasn't open to the whole amputation bit. So you had family there. You have parents, yes. siblings. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they were standing there. Yes, and mm -hmm. friends. They were all there with me, and the doctors only had one choice to tell me because I'm above 18. Okay. So that I can consent, consent is from to, you. Yes. Mm. Since my fa family members had refused, they were scared. They didn't know how life would be after. Oh, all so the this. family had refused? Yes. Had they explained to the family what it would then mean if the toxins? Yes, they did. But they felt there was some other solution. Everyone kept coming up with different solutions. Let's try this, let's try going to church, maybe mm. they pray for it and all that. Oh, the African way, yes. yes. We, we, love, we love our <laughs> God, <laughs> you've got to admit. I know. <laughs> wow. Yes. So later I consented, uh, I had to do some research, mm -hmm. but I really wished I could meet someone that has gone through this, that has experienced it, and to know what would happen, life after amputation, what should I expect? And as a lady, 
definitely things that's change. That's also different. Yes. And, and I think that's what I was exactly I was saying, because this young man had come to um, where else I work, which is Capturid, and he had said to me, the doctors, the doctor had his two feet. Yes. And he was telling me life will be okay. How would he have known? Exactly. He's just telling me from the medical side. And I, I think I'd never thought of that. Because most cases you tell someone it will be fine, it will be okay. But what do you know? But you really what don't do know, you know how, what, what they're going you know? through. Exactly. Yeah. So you consented, which means you, you said you had done your research. Yes. You thought about it? I thought about it. They gave me 48 hours. Wow. I thought That's about it. I know it's like a <laughs> lot of pressure. <laughs> I thought about it. I did research online. Mm -hmm. I and then later my friends got to meet Alex at mm -hmm. work. Who is the other co-founder? Who is the founder of the oh, organization? Actually founder. Mm -hmm. And they told him about me. We talked, and he was such an inspiration. Mm -hmm. He helped me out of all this, and it went well after that. Wow. Yeah. I, you know you say that, Charlotte, but I can imagine once you wake up from the your operation mm. your mind races yes i can imagine i saw so moody i so i had like this attitude because i felt like you know going into theater i had hopes that god would do something different i'd wake up and, and wake something up and was like, fixed yeah mm. they're, they're like your veins are now fine you can go home and i i woke up and my leg was off it was hard. I got an attitude after that, and the doctors were all making fun of me. They're like, ha, ah, now she has an attitude because I was always <laughs> okay. this happy patient. And, and then you had turned into somebody else. Yes. It was really hard because when you've been on your two feet, you do everything on, for yourself, you're independent. It's so hard for you to one day wake up and you don't, you can't help yourself when it comes to carrying things. You have crutches, there's no way you can carry. And then you're bedridden for some time. And then there's this pain that comes in. It's terrible. There are a lot of challenges. And people look mm. at you with all this pity, so you feel like... Uh, Don't feel sorry for me. Yeah. yeah it has yeah. already happened. We have to move on. Uh, uh, because your family had said no, they didn't want yes. it. And I'm trying to explain it in this way, because when you think of people... Um, I know you, you, you categorize as persons with disabilities. Yes. And someone said that, stop looking at these people and just saying it's one human being. This entire family also suffers in one way or another. Yes, they do. Now, your family had refused to consent to it. They, they did not want to see their child, child. or their sister amputated. Yes. And now here you are amputated. What, what, how do the next days, months look like with them? Are they making you feel worse? <laughs> are they more in tears than you are? I would say they were more in tears than I was. Mm -hmm. uh, it took my father like a month or so oh. to look at me like he would just come and like one minute he's already gone, he couldn't bear it. Oh, no. Same with other family members. My mom was the strongest because I think she saw how focused I was on getting through this and mm -hmm. she was like, let me be strong for my daughter. So it, uh, family members were really affected because I would fall. I'd forget that I don't have a limb and then all of a sudden I'm falling off the stairs or mm. I woke up in the morning and then was standing to dress up and then mm. I'm down. It was really terrible. They got through it, but the first months were very hard for them. Uh, they went through a lot of pain. Whenever they would see me fall and I'm in pain, they would really would feel be, bad. Yeah. But yeah. Where did you get your strength though? I would say God. Yeah. God and friends. I I belong to a cell in Watoto, so they stood by me all the time. And God gave me the strength. I believe there's a reason why I'm going through this and there is a reason why I'm this joyful even after the accident. It's just been eight months. It's so hard. When people meet me they think I've it's been an for like five years mm. or so. They they get shocked when I'm like, No, it's this year. Whoa. It's just amazing. It's good. You speak about friends. Have you been in touch with the friends from that night? Yeah, some of them. <laughs> some of them. Yeah. Well, you see, when you get into such a situation, uh, some people I think are scared, some feel guilty, but most of them have been in touch with me. They've been supportive. They've been with me throughout. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what, outside of what we can see, what has changed in you? I'm more focused. I'm like, I, I, already, I, I have like this push where I want to challenge myself because I believe other people don't think I can do certain things. Mm -hmm. So I keep doing things that amaze them and challenge them and they're like, well, she's fine. I went back to work a week after being discharged. 
a week. Was the shocker. Yes. Where do where do you work? I work at Tambelina Nursery and Daycare. It's a school in uh, Sasi. Mm -hmm. I'm the administrator. Whoa. So you can imagine running around with kids. With the kids. <laughs> yeah. So a week yeah. after being discharged, I went back to work. And it was amazing. You were feeling person. fine and you, you were up for it? I was very fine. Perhaps that also helps. You know, yeah. you put your mind... Then staying in bed, mm -hmm. you go to work and get busy. You don't get to think about it. That's fantastic. So, yeah. so tell me how you then become a co-founder of the Amputee Support Network uh, Uganda. As per the hustle, I went through looking for someone who would understand what I was going to go through and ex who had experience already as an amputee. Mm -hmm. I felt like we, I haven't really seen very many organizations coming up in hospitals or anywhere to tell us about this. Mm. Online, it's really hard to search for them because most people feel they can't come out. They have no hope. They're stigmatized. Yes. And I looked for someone for so long for like... A Doesn't the hospital though attach you to someone? They would mm -hmm. if I think they had enough... Like if they had support. people, mm. people giving them the support, people allowing to, to get in touch with them. Oh. Alex is one of the people you can get in touch with, mm -hmm. in like most hospitals, his contact is there. Mm. And I wanted this organization, we talked with Alex and I was like, I want to be able to help some girl there, some boy there who feels really low, mm -hmm. who can not help themselves, who are feeling hopeless, families who feel like now this one is done. Because unlike you, some people's families abandon yes. them. Yes, true. You know, so they don't even have that luxury of someone true. being there. Yes. You know, so that's that's fantastic. You you talked about, I wanted someone to talk to me about what I was going to go through. But mm. then you said, also as a girl. As a girl. There's a difference, there's isn't there? There's a difference. There's a big difference because, you see, as a man, ladies, we are very accepting to, to, to meet guys who are disabled and you're like, mm. no, it's that's That's okay, true. Yeah. We're quite accepting. Yeah. <laughs> we are very accepting. I think it's the n nurturing in us. You tend to look beyond yes, certain the things. Disabilities. But uh, as a girl, most people, the most questions I would get after the amputation were, are you married? Do you have a child? Really? Yeah. Can you still give birth? And it was so weird. I was like, well, my leg has nowhere to, nothing to do with the reproductive system. I can, imagine. I can get married. But most people feel like you can't because now you're an amputee. They don't think you're useful. But we're useful. We have, I'm like so energetic. You can't even compete with I me. I mean, you're still at work. Yes. And what, what, what in terms of the Amputee Support Network Uganda, do you, you guys, is this is new? Yes, this is new. But okay. we have all been doing outreach in different places. We have, uh, we have a soccer team, oh. amputee football team. Mm -hmm. We play soccer. We have events. We organize mm -hmm. events. Uh, we do a lot generally. I I'm, I love swimming, so I go swimming, mm -hmm. and people get shocked when they they like how do you even I enter know. water with one leg. But we do a lot. Uh, we meet disabled people outside there. People contact us when mm -hmm. they feel we need to talk to someone. People in hospital when they have challenges convincing a, per a patient that you know what amputation is like the only resort you have. Mm -hmm. They find challenges convincing the parent the patient. So. They always have to contact us to come in hospital and talk mm. to this person and show them that really there is life after. If I'm leaving, yes. you can too. I've actually yeah. met a lot of people that feel inspired. Whenever they see me, I'm happy and they get to know that I got an accident this year. They're like, well, I can also do this. Yeah. Yes. Wow. First of all, that's, that's amazing. I mean, I'm glad that you're even being attached to the hospitals because, as someone said, the doctors might be able to explain medically, but you're going to explain life after. Yes. What it looks like, what it can look like. And I'm glad you're using sports because you're using an avenue nobody would have thought, yes. you know, amputees would go into or they would find impossible. Again, our minds are myopic because sometimes that's how the world is. Someone yes. looks just <laughs> where they are, which is unfortunate. But I'm glad you're using sports. Are you going to hard to reach areas? Are you going to communities that yes, many of us wouldn't think we about? Are. We are. We even have an event on 2nd second, mm -hmm. second December okay. in Entebbe. We are going to have a sports match there for amputees. Nice. They've been going around, but as I said, we don't really have that much publicity. So I mm. hope our organization is there to do that, mm -hmm. to reach out to all those people in those far places. Mm. And we hope with time and with finances, with, with 
finance is increasing, we mm -hmm. get to meet all those people. It's just a start, yes, Charlotte. And a, a good start, start by the way. Uh, this is Kangome Charlotte. Um, she is um, an amputee. That, that's how I'm supposed to state yes. it. She's an amputee. And you can imagine this big, bright smile. Her accident was in January this year. Yes. Which means she's just months into her amputation. And life you have grabbed it you know yes, you have. are happy <laughs> you are moving on with life in fact even better you're helping others yes. and i asked her a very important question because somebody might be watching and thinking okay that was an accident so which means she's only helping those who have been amputated because of an accident no you're helping uh, amputation as amputation. long as you are amputated it doesn't yes. matter what reason got you to that yes now i was matter. i'm glad you explained and said that i mean for us ladies i mean the man is looking at you thinking am i going to date her yeah, how will she be like wife material a mom clothes? you know things like that but even the men go through that because yes. i was explaining that i have family members who are amputees and talk to me about stigma because before you get to the man who might or might not date you there's even the people around yes, you. People You're around working. You. you know what I mean? You you came from where you came from where you live to get to NTV. There are people you meet along the way. Yeah. And unfortunately, not all our mindsets are the same. How do you deal with the stigma? Uh, I think uh, me personally, it's just my happy face. I just look over it. I don't really mind it. And I keep challenging those people that feel like I can't do this. I've met people who have told me, but now you can't run to this side. And I'm like, why? Mm. I have my crushes. I have one leg. I'm blessed. Someone without, a l without both legs can still run. Mm -hmm. Why can't I? Yeah. And I, I try to educate people. I try to tell them, though I have one leg, I can still do whatever you can do. Nothing is going to stop me. It's all about the mindset. Yeah. And if I can reach out to all those amputees that feel they can't do anything, all that can change and we can be included. We, we need people to include us in everything they do. Out there, I've seen, uh, I've researched and I've seen models who are amputees. Yes. I've seen sports, sportsmen who are really good at what they do. And that's because they have included them in whatever they do. And mm -hmm. we need that in Uganda. We need people to feel like we are, we are still human. We, are, we have nothing changed. Mm -hmm. It's just a limb that you've lost. Mm -hmm. And you can still do everything. So we need to educate them. When I meet people who, are, who look at me like, oh my God, I'm like, well, I'm still human. I can do anything you can do. I talk to them. I'm confident about talking to those people because I feel if I educate one person, they can educate another person mm -hmm. about us. You know what I used to hate when my uncle got amputated is how family members would openly say, ah, you know, he has one leg. I'm like, why is that the first sentence? Exactly. <laughs> why must you define people <laughs> like that? It's terrible. Uh, why stay in my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. They knew me as Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got an amputation, when I got the amputation, people started referring to, when people would look for my home, they'd be like, Oh, oh no. And I'm like, really? I'm still Charlotte. Not all your mala It was terrible, but well. <laughs> I, you, as like you said, you just keep smiling yeah. and moving on. Let's talk about cost. It, I, I noticed that when, when my uncle was going to get a, how do you call it? The, the a, prosthetic. a prosthetic. That was also a cost. Yes. It's really expensive. Mm. And to get a really nice one is hard because prices differ from the places you go to. B but explain that to me. Not everybody can get a prosthetic, right? Or is that is it the different levels of healing? Yes, the different levels of healing mm -hmm. and uh, the prosthetics are, are are given to you as per your level of amputation. Oh. They can even give you a prosthetic finger. Really? Yes. Wow. It's amazing. So it is amazing. And you can't tell when someone is putting it on. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. So so at different levels of healing, are you eligible for a prosthetic? Yes, I'm uh, I'm in the process. I'm okay. trying to procure one. Mm -hmm. Hopefully before Christmas. Okay. Yes. And um so you said it's expensive. It's expensive from the point I have, I'm sick, I'm getting an amputation or it's just the prosthetic? The prosthetic alone is expensive. Okay. Uh the if if you if you're going to for a normal one, it could range from 3 million. What's what's like normal? Five, like one that doesn't have mobility, like you just use it for moving, okay. but it can't work as well as your as a normal leg. So you're trying to tell me there's a prosthetic that, that would ideally mimic a leg? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It is there, but a bit expensive. It mm -hmm. could be like in 31M and above. That's the one that can mimic a leg? Yeah. Wow. It's and tell me, so if you spend 30 plus million on that prosthetic leg, 
it then stays put or you have to keep going for uh, reviews? It stays put, but uh, they definitely get spoiled. They're mechanical. Yeah. So you, you need to take them for repair once in a while. They break. You could be working and it breaks off. Mm. It's really not an easy process. It's an expensive life. That's mm. why amputees should come out, work, not sit at home because life has ended. No, you should work and look forward to getting Support one. yourself yeah. in one or another. Because no one is going to really support you that much. Mm -hmm. We have friends, they'll support you as they can. Mm -hmm. But you also need to put in effort. Mm -hmm. but, but in terms of work also, I know that there's a very small percentage of uh, PWDs who are actually put in the workforce. Yes. That's also not available for... Yes. Yes, but we're going to work on that. Uh, mm. you, you, most people, when you go to look for a job, or they find you at work, they're like, how do you do this? Mm. How will you move if your boss sends you to this and this place? How will you get to one place to the other? It means you need a car. But it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need a car for easy mobility. It's like your second, second pair of legs. But you can still move without a car mm -hmm. and get on with life. You can still work. You can still do normal work. And people should open up their minds, be open-minded, and mm -hmm. really look forward to working with amputees. They are really energetic. They are really hard-working people mm. because they already know what they want. They already have a focus in life. Okay. So um, if you can just tell us um, the Amputee Support Network Uganda, how we can support somebody watching and uh, maybe two, as you were saying, 2nd December, just remind us if that's open to the public as well, yes. that they can come. And as you're winding up, I want you to just talk to, to I think, both ends. Talk to amputees just what they need to know and also to those who are not amputees who are a support system in one way or another maybe in the community in the home to those who are amputated what you would want them to take away today uh one i would like people to be open-minded about pws mm. uh, these people are really good in heart they just need a push a support network mm -hmm. and stigma is not good for this these these human beings because when you stigmatize someone, they feel like they can't move on. Hence suicide, hence, hence depression. All these things come because people don't believe in you. People are not helping you, show you that you can still do this. And you can contact us. Mm -hmm. uh, our office are at Echo Bank. Okay. Echo Bank. And I could, we shall be leaving you our number. No, you can, can feel free right to now. read it. Yes. Uh, my number is 75 880 7298. You can also contact Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also check our Facebook page. It's Amputees Support Network Uganda okay. on Facebook. We'll soon open a page on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so and, and not even people who are not amputees can call you because yes. you need the support. You say yes, you need we funding need, as well. We need funding. Where, where mostly do you need the funding? Is that to support you to go into the communities in the information phase or? Uh, support us in going in the communities, support our events, attend our events. Mm -hmm. It will be lovely if you would. So the next event that we can support you on is on the 2nd? On 2nd. It's in Entebbe? Yes. Where exactly in Entebbe? Uh, over, sorry. Will we find it on Facebook? Yes, it is on there Facebook. There you go. <laughs> and sorry. we're paying entry? No, don't no. worry about it. Uh, if, if you're a disabled person, no entry. Mm -hmm. Children, no, n sorry. Free Children, entry. Free entry. <laughs> yeah. And if you're able bodied, two legs, two arms, a uh, charge of 10,000. There you go. I mean, that's Very one cheap. way. Of, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So please support because that's the same money that's going back into Amputee Support Network Uganda yes. to be able to do your work. Yes. It, it's, it's worked for you to be part of this network, hasn't it? Yes, it has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so you because were studying law? Yes. I'm a lawyer by profession. There you go. And you want to? Yes, I do. Mm. I uh, had to do my my back course this year, but I couldn't because mm -hmm. of the accident. So next year. Next year, well in. I'm I'm so proud of you. Thank you. You are <laughs> such a light and such a joy. Thank well, you. that's Kangome Charlotte. She's a co-founder of the Amputee Support Network. You're gonna just go on Facebook and, and find them. Yes. I'm sure you can get all the information there. Amputee Support Network. You're gonna if you have a family member, if you are an amputee yourself, or if you're not, you're able-bodied, but you want to be able to support in any way you can. I mean, you might be sitting there saying diabetes that may not happen to me. This disease might not happen to me. But an accident is what put Charlotte in this position. So this can happen to anybody just do your bid and support thank you so much for your time this thank morning you too. nice to meet you nice that's it for morning at ntv have yourselves a good day